Come on in and have some fun. Come on. So just come in and learn with us with the mouse in the house. With Lucia and Billy and Jessica and Dino. Yeah. So come on, young scientists. Come join the mouse in the house. Uh-huh. Hi, guys. My name is Max. Welcome to my lab. Warning. Today's experiment is too much fun to do just once. What do you think it involves? <laughs> An explosion, of course! Today, we're making Elka seltzer rockets. You will need empty film canisters, Elka seltzer tablets, and soda water. Let's begin the experiment! Firstly, we're just going to use soda water. Add the soda water into the film canister. Fit the lid on the canister, making sure that you seal it tightly. Shake the canister and place it on a flat surface. Now stand back. Whoa! Look at that! It exploded! Now get your friends and try the Alka Salsa rocket experiment. This time we'll try it with some plain water and the Alka Salsa tablet. Fill the canister halfway with water. Drop the Alka Salsa tablet inside. Put the lid on the plastic film canister. Very, very quickly, place it down and wait for liftoff. Whoa! That was great! How does this work? When you mix the water and alka seltzer tablets, a chemical reaction occurs with the carbon dioxide gas building up. The pressure increases inside the canister until the lid is blown right off. Will the experiment work if we use a bigger container? Yes! But you will need to add a few more tablets and water. Try it and see what happens. Let's take a ride in my space pod and see exactly how a real rocket works. There are many different types of rockets. Ones that you can launch yourself for fun and ones that astronauts use to fly into outer space. Rockets fly in the air, but not like airplanes or helicopters. They're much faster and more powerful. They can fly straight up with such force that they pass through the atmosphere into outer space. Rockets can only take off when a blast of energy forces them to move. The energy is created by rocket fuel. When the rocket is launched, it is set to blast off. So come on kids, let's count this rocket down. Three. Two, one, lift off! Now I'll see you back at my lab, kids! Let's see what our green tip is for today. Instead of throwing away empty plastics and containers, rather keep them and reuse them. Store your toys or fruits in them. Be as creative as you want. Phew! What a day! Today we learned about how different substances react when they're combined. Also about rockets. That's all for today, kids. See you next time. The movement of warm and cold water due to temperature is called convection currents. And today we're making our own currents in a bottle. You will need empty bottles, hot and cold water, food colouring, a dropper and an old playing card. Let's begin the experiment. Fill one bottle with hot water and the other with cold water. Use the orange food colouring to colour the hot water and the blue food colouring to colour the cold water. the playing card over the top of the hot water bottle. Use gloves to hold the hot water bottle as you turn the bottle upside down and rest it on top of the cold water bottle. The bottles should be positioned so they are mouth to mouth and the card is separating the two liquids. Steady! Carefully slip the card out from between the two bottles. Make sure that you are holding on to the top bottle when you are removing the card. See how the water does not mix. 
Now, place the bottle of cold water on top of the hot water. Let's see what happens this time. Carefully remove the card. Now watch as the water from the top flows into the bottom bottle and the colors mix. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. Now you try, but the other way around. Please make sure that you have a parent present when you're handling hot water. Fill the bottles with water, one hot and one cold. Color the cold water with the blue. Add the hot water with the orange food coloring. Ready? Let's get started. Put the playing card over the cold water bottle and turn it upside down on top of the hot water bottle. Pull the card out from between the two bottles. It's amazing how the water mixes! Why does the water not mix when the hot water is on top? When the bottle of hot water is placed on top, the heavier cold water stays in the bottom and the less dense hot water stays on top. Why does the water mix when the cold water is on top? When the less dense hot water rises to the top of the bottle, the cold water sinks. There's a movement of water inside the bottle, mixing the colours. This is referred to as a convection current. Now let's get into my space pod and go deep down into the ocean where convection currents occur. Destination, the Atlantic Ocean. Convection currents occur in any fluid in which there's a temperature difference. In the ocean, this is what causes currents. There is such a fascinating world under the ocean. Whoa! What was that? I get classes in because a school of fish just raced past me. <laughs> Look at the different coloured coral. Beautiful! Now let's get back to dry land. See you at my lab, kids! Now for my green tip of the day. When you go on a picnic, rather use cloth napkins and washable plates instead of buying paper and plastic plates that get thrown away afterwards. Now go out there and amaze your friends. See you next time. Which ball would you expect to float? A big one or a small one? Well, today we're going to make floating steel balls. You will need two steel balls, one big one, and one small one, but both weighing the same. And some water in a large bowl. Let's begin the experiment. Weigh the balls to make sure that they both weigh the same. Now carefully place the big steel ball in the tank filled with water. Let's look at what's going to happen. Wow! It's floating! Now put the small ball into the water. As you can see, the small ball sinks right to the bottom. Now it's your turn. Place the balls on the scale and make sure that they both weigh the same. Put the big steel ball into the water and watch it float. Now repeat this experiment with the smaller ball. Incredible! You would think that the bigger ball would sink, but not this time. Why did one sink and one float? The bigger ball is less dense than the surrounding water which makes it float. And the smaller ball is more dense, causing it to sink. What other objects can we use? Well, you can use any objects really. See what objects you can find in your home and have fun with floating and sinking objects. Remember to ask your parents first. All aboard my space pod. We're off to the ocean to see how boats and enormous ships float on the water. Ships are made of steel, so why do they float? A ship 
has a large volume of air trapped in it and therefore has a lower density than the surrounding water that it sits in. So it floats. See you back at my lab. Today's green tip is... Be careful not to litter on parks and roads because it's not very good for the environment. Well, that was another great experiment. Bon voyage! Kids, you know how much fun it is to speak to your friends on the telephone. Well, today we're going to make a paper cup telephone. You will need two paper cups, a sharp object to poke a hole with, a pair of scissors, some string and a friend to talk to. Let's begin the experiment. Using a sharp object, poke a hole in the bottom of the cups. Cut a piece of string about two meters long. Pull the string through the hole of the first paper cup. And tie the end of the line tightly so that it doesn't slip through the hole. Do this with the other cup as well using the other end of the string. Look! You've made your very own homemade telephone! Now you try make your own telephone. Poke a hole in the bottom of each cup. Cut a piece of string. Pull it through the holes and tie a knot at the end of the string. Now, hold one end of the cup to your ear and let your friend talk in the other cup. Remember to keep the line tight. Are you enjoying the science experiment? Yes, how about you? Yes, I am. Only you'll be able to hear your friend chatting away, just like a real telephone. Would you try these experiments at home if you saw them on the show? Yeah. How does this work? Speaking into the cup, transmits sound waves into the bottom of the cup. As the bottom of the cup vibrates, it transmits the vibrations into the string. These vibrations travel through the string and the person on the other end can hear the sound waves. Why doesn't it work if the line is sagging? If the string is sagging, the sound vibration will not travel along the string and the listeners will not be able to hear. What is sound? Sound is a type of energy made by vibrations. When an object vibrates, it causes movement in the air particles. When the vibrations are fast, you hear a high note. When the vibrations are low, you hear a low note. So let's get into my space pod and go discover a place where sound can be heard over and over again. near a mountain, your voice travels until it reaches the side of a mountain and then bounces off creating an echo. Mountain areas and caves are usually so full of echoes! Let's get back to my lab kids! Let's go green with today's green tip. Water your lawn in the late afternoon or in the evening because then the water will not evaporate as much as it would during the heat of the day. So today we made our very own telephone and learned about echoes. How awesome was today? Yes, I thought it was lots of fun and we learned a lot. Stay hip and cool with Science at School. Bye kids! Today we're going to shoot our very own homemade arrows. So get ready to aim Shoot with your own homemade squeeze bottle arrows. For this experiment you will need an empty flexible plastic bottle, modeling clay, two different size straws, one large one and one small one. Let's begin the experiment. Push the smaller straw into the opening of the bottle. The straw should fit snugly in the hole. Use modeling clay to seal any possible leaks between the straw and the hole in the bottle. Push one end of the bigger straw into the smaller piece of modeling clay. 
place the larger straw over the smaller straw. Ready? Aim! Squeeze! <laughs> the larger straw shoots off the smaller straw and the room erupts with the chorus of oohs and ahs. Okay kids, now it's your turn. Push the smaller straw into the opening of the bottle. Use muddling clay to seal the bottom to prevent any air from escaping between the straw and the hole. Push one end of the bigger straw into another piece of muddling clay. Remember to cover the tip with something soft. Now it's time to shoot! Look how far it goes! Incredible! Arrows are totally awesome! How does it work? As you squeeze the bottle, Air is forced out of the straw and pushed against the clay plug in the larger straw. The resulting force causes the straw to propel through the air. Can we use any other bottle? You need to make sure that you use a flexible plastic bottle that is easy to squeeze. The harder you squeeze, the further your arrow will go. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Come and join me in my space pod as we go and see archery in action. Archery is the art of propelling arrows forward with the use of a bow. To become an expert archer or bowman requires a lot of practice and patience. Steady now, take aim, shoot! Wow, is that a perfect bullseye? The most common form of an arrow consists of a shaft with an arrowhead attached to the front end and with fletchings and a knock attached to the other end. Another bullseye! Great! Let's shoot like an arrow back to my lab, kids! Now for my green tip of the day! When you're making a cup of tea, make sure that you put enough water in the kettle for one cup. It will be quicker to boil and save electricity! Today, we've learnt about equal and opposite reactions and also about the skill of archery. That's all for today, kids! See you next time! Do you think it's possible to stack liquids on top of each other? Well, today we're going to stack six liquids on top of each other in a six liquid layer stack. Say it again! Six liquid layer stack! <laughs> you will need some paraffin, alcohol, vegetable oil, Water coloured with food colouring Liquid soap Some syrup A cylinder or long glass And six cups Let's begin the experiment! You need to pour each liquid slowly into the container one at a time Make sure you pour them in the following order Syrup Now add the dishwashing liquid. Then pour the water. Now the vegetable oil. And then the alcohol. Oops! Careful! And finally, the paraffin. As you pour, the liquids will layer on top of one another. After you pour in the liquids, you will have a six-layer science experiment. Wow! <laughs> Now it's your turn. Remember to pour each liquid slowly into the container, one at a time. Make sure that you pour them in the following order. First the syrup. Don't forget to give your friends a turn. <laughs> now the dishwashing liquid. Now the vegetable oil. And then the alcohol. And finally the paraffin. is totally cool! How does it work? The liquids that weigh more or have a higher density will sink below the liquids that weigh less. For example, the syrup weighs more than the liquid soap. What is density? 
density is basically a comparison between an object's weight and how much space it takes up. I mixed the liquids while I was pouring them in. Is this a problem? It's okay if the liquids mix a little as you're pouring. The layers will always even themselves out because of the varying densities. This actually reminds me of another king of stacking. Let's get into my space pod and go find a sweet surprise. Many of us love eating cakes and there's so many cakes to choose from. There are many different types of cakes like sponge cakes and cupcakes but today our focus is on layered cakes. A layered cake is a cake that is made up of multiple layers usually held together by frosting or another type of filling such as jam or cream. <laughs> and good enough to eat. See you back at my lab, kids! Today's green tip is... Dry your clothes on a washing line instead of using a dryer. It's cleaner, cheaper and makes your clothes smell a lot fresher. Today, we learned more about density and also how to make a delicious layered cake. Yummy! So whiz kids, experiment at home and we'll meet next time. Today, we're going to look at the properties of surface tension in water. Afterwards, we're going to make our very own homemade tap. You will need a plastic soda bottle, a glass bottle, a sieve, a sharp piercing object and a glass tank filled with water. Now let's begin the experiment. Fill the glass bottle with water and place the sieve on top. Turn both of them upside down. At first, there's a rush of water that leaks through but then the water stops flowing. Wow! That's amazing! How does that work? Surface tension allows the water molecules to form a membrane. As a result, the water stays in the bottle. Now using the same principle, we're going to make a homemade tap. Using a sharp object, pierce some holes into the bottom of the plastic bottle. Be very careful when using sharp objects. Fill the bottle with water right to the top. And quickly close the opening. Now look at that! The water doesn't run through! Incredible! Now unscrew the cap and watch! Now the water runs through! And close! Open! And close! <laughs> You're really good! Now get your friend to try! Open! And close! Open! Homemade tap. When the cap is screwed onto the soda bottle, air pressure cannot get inside the bottle. When the cap is opened, air sneaks through the top and pushes down on the water surface. And together with gravity, the water pours out through the holes at the bottom. Very interesting. Well kids, let's go see how water pressure can make electricity. So come and join me in my space pod as we go to the dam. A dam is built where there's a natural lake or big river in a valley. It is used to hold water and create pressure so that the water produces electrical power that we can use. Hydroelectric dams provide a source of renewable energy all over the world. The water flows from a high point to a lower point by gravity. The flowing water produces mechanical energy and turns the turbine propeller. This energy is used to turn generators and create electricity. 
Let's get back to my lab, kids! Join the green team with today's green tip. Ask your parents to fix dripping taps because the longer the tap drips, the more water is wasted. One drop per second can add up to more water than one person uses in two weeks. Wow! That was very interesting! Today, we learned about surface tension of water and hydroelectric power. That's all for today, kids! See you next time! <laughs>